So, uh, I bought some books. <laughs> Barnes & Noble and Book Outlet had a huge sale this month, so it's not really my fault that I bought a bunch of books. I ordered this for my 24-hour readathon, which I'll link up here, but it didn't end up coming in time, so I read other stuff, but I'm really excited about it. This is Beneath the Sugar Sky. This is the third in the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. I read the first two. I like to read one of them every couple months just so I can savor the series so that I never run out of books. I'm really excited to continue in this series. It's really, really fun, portal fantasy. Every other book is set in one of the worlds and I really love those books, but this is one that is set at the like home for the kids. Then I went to Barnes & Noble with my friend. We were both having a very bad day and we went to Barnes and Noble and we fixed it with books. <laughs> so the first one I have is The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. This is a really interestingly structured story and I have video plans for this, but as you can see, it's a book, but then another character has written in the margins and is correcting things that our character who's writing this story has written because I believe he's writing a memoir and she's crossed it out and written novel. So she's basically challenging the same things he's saying and saying that it's fake, it's made up because um, there's some information about her in there that gets a little speculative. This is classified as horror, but I think this is a little genre defying and I think it's gonna be more unsettling than it is horrifying. So I'm really interested in that. I can't wait to read this book. I'm so excited about it. My best friend's exorcism. I love the way that Grady Hendrix structures his books. Like they're always have so much thought that go into them. And this one is built to look like a VHS tape and it's like worn around the edges and it's got like staff pick stickers on it. It's just a really thoughtful design. I wanna read this as soon as possible, but I might wait until more fall season rolls around, but it's already almost September, so I should just read this now. Then I got the second Heartstopper. I wanted to buy all of them, but it's better for my bank account and it's better for my excitement if I get to like finish the book and then have the excitement of going and buying the next one. I don't know, it just feels better. So I'm really excited to read the second Heartstopper. I'm so excited about everything. I can't even contain myself. Then we have Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I think this is going to solidify T. Kingfisher as a favorite author. I have read When Was the Dead and Sword Heart, and I loved both of them to death. And if T. Kingfisher can take a third genre and make me love it, I'm gonna read everything she's ever written. I'm already gonna read everything she's ever written, but this was the only T. Kingfisher they had at Barnes & Noble that I hadn't read yet. So I will be reading this as soon as I physically can. I really wanna pick up The Hollow Places as well. That's like on my October TBR for sure. So as soon as I find that, I will be reading it. Then I picked up The Bell Jar and I've been looking for so long for a cover that I like and I don't love this cover, but I just, I need to read this book immediately. I wanted a paperback over a hardcover. It's not my favorite cover, but I'm not gonna spend three more months trying to find the perfect cover. I'm just gonna read the book. <laughs> Michael, if you're watching, skip to the next book because this might be your Christmas present, so. Click away now. <laughs> Uh, this is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and I think it would be a really good present for my brother because Michael makes video games for a living and this is about two friends who make a video game together and it's literary fiction and I think it could be like a really solid home run for him. Um, but I wanted to read it before I give it to him. That's my thing. I always give people books that I've read for their birthdays and for Christmas. So I want to read it before I gift it to him. I'm sure I'll love it too, but um, I've been seeing this everywhere finally bit the bullet and bought it and it's thicker than I thought it was gonna be like this is a this is almost four this is basically 400 pages I thought it was two to three hundred for whatever reason but I am intrigued I'm a little weary of that one I feel like now is not the right time for me to read it but it was on sale so I will I will get to it before Christmas so that I can get my brother a copy if I want to then I got my favorite book of all time I lent my copy to a friend of mine and then I moved across the country so I never got it back and 
I am rarely someone who rereads books, but I talk about this book all the time and I desperately do want to reread it. So it's gonna happen this October. I have plans to reread it. And it is House of Leaves. I'm so excited. This is just like, <laughs> I love this book so much and I really, really wanna reread it. So I got myself a copy. I'm really excited about it. Now we have this gigantic box from Book Outlet and there's so many books in it that the box broke and the mailman had to deliver it upside down because <laughs> the bottom broke. So let's open it upside down. Oh my goodness. I love books. Okay. Beautiful world, where are you? I found all of the books, all of the books in this box were $5.99. Can you believe that? A Sally Rooney hardcover for $5.99. Ridiculous. <laughs> so, of course, I bought this many. How could I not? I've read Normal People, I've read Conversations with Friends, and it's time to read this. I was chatting with one of my friends. She told me that I had to pick it up. So, Juliana, I listened and I bought it. <laughs> then we have Pachinko. I've been hearing amazing, amazing, amazing things about this and I just never really picked it up. I don't know why. I think maybe the size of the book was a little intimidating to me, but I love a paperback. I love a gigantic paperback. This is about four generations of a family and family epics either really hit or really miss for me. So I wasn't going to pick this up full price, but since I found it discounted, I'm definitely gonna give it a go. I really hope that it's a home run for me. Then I got some classics. So I have an Agatha Christie. I've never read Agatha Christie and I thought it would be fun to do a little like murder mystery situation. I was thinking about this and now I'm like halfway through watching Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. He's doing a, trying to solve a murder mystery on a train and it's a really, really fun video. And I thought that might be a cool thing to do. I'm not gonna go on a train, but it might be fun to read And Then There Were None, which is one of the most popular Agatha Christie's. I've never read it. I've never watched any adaptations of it. I thought it would be really fun to do a video about that. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe so you'll be around to see that video. Okay, then I bought something really silly and I'm probably gonna regret this, but I bought Boundary Waters. And after I bought it, I realized this may be a series and I haven't read any of the original ones. But here's the situation. <laughs> I'm from Minnesota and in Minnesota, Northern Minnesota and Southern Canada, there is this wilderness preserve called the Boundary Waters. And it's like, a, it's basically a giant river that's got a bunch of different lakes and stuff. You have to portage in, like carry canoes and packs and stuff to get into the Boundary Waters. And it's just nature and fishing and it's fantastic. I have only been once, I, which I'm really salty about because my brother always got to go with my dad and because I was a girl, I didn't get to go. <laughs> I'm pissed about it. <laughs> so I really want to go back to the Boundary Waters. I love camping. And this is a murder mystery thriller situation and it's set, called Boundary Waters. It's set in the Boundary Waters. I thought it would be funny. So I bought a book. <laughs> I read House of Leaves in the Boundary Waters too when I went. Okay, then I did actually get another of the Wayward Children series because I know I'm gonna read the rest of the series and think this is like the seventh book, um, but it was the only one that Book Outlet had and I know I'm gonna finish this series. So I wanted to pick up whenever I find one discounted or used, I'm gonna just pick it up so I can grow that collection. Then I got Vita Nostra and this just sounds so interesting. There is like an institute with special technologies. Um, I believe this is a translated work as well. Here's the synopsis that really intrigued me. The books are impossible to read, the lessons are obscure to the point of maddening, and the work refuses memorization. Using terror and coercion, the school does not punish students directly for their transgressions and failures. Instead, their families pay a terrible price. I tend to really love Russian literature, so I'm excited. Then I got The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I think it would be really cool to read a bunch of adaptations of, it's not called The Haunting of Bly Manor. That's the TV, The Turn of the Screw. This is a reimagining of The Turn of the Screw. I want to read the original, I think it's a short story or novella 
I want to read that. I want to read this. I want to watch finish watching i started watching but then stopped watching finish watching the haunting of blind manor and just like talk about why this story keeps getting at adapted if you don't know the premise of these stories is there are children and a nanny and then stuff goes awry in a horror -y way and apparently this one is set in a smart house so i thought that was incredibly interesting i haven't read a lot of horror stories where it's a haunted smart house or there's sketchy things going on in a smart house but very intrigued by that so stay tuned for that video as well i'm spoiling all of my content plans for you today i guess okay also on the horror train i got this beautiful soft bound classic horror tales I thought it'd be really interesting to use this to kind of get a taste of some authors that I might like in the horror genre and go read some horror classics by these authors. So I'm very excited about this. I love these word cloud classics. I have two of them. I have The Count of Monte Cristo and Don Quixote and they're really expensive books. So for six bucks, I was so in. I'll read you the quote on the back. It says, the road grew wilder and drearier and more faintly traced and vanished at length, leaving him in the heart of the dark wilderness. Young Goodman Brown. Okay, we got the pit and the pendulum. Oh my God, the turn of the screw is in here. That's perfect. Oh, I'm really excited about this. All right, my camera's dying. Let me change the battery. Okay, new battery, I'm back. I still have five books left to show you. This is like, <laughs> this is too many books. I cannot believe I found this discounted because everybody's obsessed with this book, but I did finally get the Alice Six. There are six people who are inducted into this Alexandrian society, but only five of them are gonna survive their first year. We get all of the different perspectives. This was an independently published book that has now been traditionally published. This is the traditionally published cover. I do prefer the independently published cover, but for six bucks, I wasn't gonna, <laughs> wasn't gonna say no to her. I'm excited to see if this lives up to the hype. I do have video plans for this one as well. Most of these I have video plans for. Then I found another really cool edition and I've been looking for an edition of this book forever and I really, really love this one. It's the picture of Dorian Gray. I just think that cover is very cool. And this is one of those like soft cover. Um, and I really, really love these uh, soft hard covers. This font is a, <laughs> a bit small, but everyone says that this is one of their favorite classics and I don't know how I haven't read it yet. So I've been on the hunt for a cover that I like and for six bucks, yes, please. So I'm really happy that I found this one and that it's like a really cool cover. It's gonna look amazing on my shelves. So I'm very, very excited about this. The quote that's on the back for this one is, live, live the wonderful life that is in you. Let nothing be lost upon you. Be always searching for new sensations. Be afraid of nothing. Thank you, Oscar Wilde. This is one that I found while I was trying to find cozy books for that 24 hour readathon. And it's Once Upon a River. This I have heard is a very cozy fantasy. I did start listening to the audiobook. Really, really loved it. Unfortunately, wasn't able to keep listening to it before I had to return to the library. So I figured I would grab a physical copy because it was so discounted. But already in the first chapter or two that I read. It was very unsettling, lots of unexplained things happening. I really loved the world that we were in, but basically the premise is three girls are missing, one is returned, a story begins. I'm very interested. I have two left to show you. The first one is Catherine House. I do have video plans for this as well. I feel like people either love or hate this, but this is very gothic. We're at this school in rural Pennsylvania, very gothic vibes. And for the people who are selected to go to the school, tuition is free, but there's some sinister things happening. This cover just really intrigues me. I feel like the mixture of the pink and then this like dark blue is just, it just looks very fever dream and I'm so in for that. Okay, the last one I got, I'm unreasonably excited about and that's Outlawed. This cover feels very Rene Magritte to me and I'm so in for that. Apparently in this society, women who can't have children are hanged as witches. I believe there's also like a gang of librarians who are bandits. <laughs> I'm very intrigued and interested to see what this is all about. I was gonna try to hold all the books up, but I literally can't. <laughs> this is half of them. Here's the other stack. <laughs> That's everything that I bought. 
Well, actually, no, that's not everything I bought. I have two more to show you. I went to my local independent bookstore on Tuesday for the release day of Babel. And not only did I get a copy, I got an autographed copy. I'm, I'm still in shock. I'm really, really excited. I'll be officially dropping everything to devour this book. I have video plans for it. You'll get to see the whole thing. Don't worry. And then I also for, I believe it's October, the book club book for Allison Page's Pocket Pages book club is Ring Shout. And I found it at my indie while I was there picking up Babel. So I figured I would grab it. I've wanted to read this for a long time and I haven't actually been able to find it in many bookstores. So I'm glad that my local independent had a copy of it. So I snatched that right up. That's everything that I got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 23 books. I bought 23 books. <laughs> the majority of these were four specific videos for the next two months. So I'm pretty much not going to be buying much of anything until November because I have all of my content planned for September and October now with all of these books. So hopefully you won't see another book haul from me for a while. You know, famous last words, I did sign up for Barnes & Noble membership. I've got a membership at my independent bookstore. I may not be able to stop myself. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I choose to spend copious amounts of my money on books because this is the thing that brings me the most joy in my life. You know, I don't go out to dinner very much. I don't buy a lot of clothing or other things. I buy books. This is my passion. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I love the fact that I don't have to annoy my friends and family by calling them and showing them what books I bought and instead I can share it with you who might actually care. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about in this video, which one I should pick up first, although I think this one is going to be the first one. So let me know which one I should pick up second. <laughs> I would love to hear what you're reading, what books you've picked up recently, what's at the top of your TBR. I'm so freaking excited for the next couple months of reading. I think I have some really fun content plans. So if you want to stick around for that, please make sure you subscribe. If you liked this video, please give it a like. I post every other Tuesday and every Friday, so I will see you very soon. Happy reading. Bye.